Excellent. Excellent. Well, um, yeah, here we are. So um, we're going to be talking a lot to my current students in, in the summer class. So welcome students uh, to this video. And this is all going to be about that project at the end of the term, the work integrated learning project. Uh, and really what I want, we, we always do these in our courses and, and they kind of shape the personality of the course. They become kind of what the course is about. Uh, and so I want to introduce you to this now, um, the project, but more importantly, to the, to the people we see here, uh, Mai and Kristen, who you will uh, hear from uh, in just a moment. These are the, they are both connected, especially Mai, with this organization called Swab the world. Uh, and that is the organization we are going to be trying to help in our final project. So all of this will be unveiled as we go through. I'm going to be just chatting with, with my and Kristen, and, and I'll be asking a few questions along the way um, to try to kind of, we'll get to what your challenge will be, um, but I'm slowly want to kind of do some other stuff in this interview too. And, and, and part of what I want to do is I harp to my students continually about the importance of things like critical thinking and creative thinking, communication, and especially collaboration. And in this project, they have to work in groups of four. And students' first reaction is, "Ugh, I hate group work. I don't want to work in groups of four. And, you know, I try to convince them, no, no, there's so much to learn by being stuck with three people you don't know, and then trying to do things with them. Uh, and so part of what I'll be asking you guys as you go along, maybe is I'm going to ask you for your stories for the background of all this. But if you can, you know, speak to like, how much of what you accomplished did you accomplish alone? Or how much did you work with others um, in order to get things done? And, and how important do you think these skills are? So, if, you know, if you want to just highlight them as well to give me a little extra ammunition. That's great. Okay. So actually let's, let's start. And, and um, I don't know, where do we want to start? You guys both have such compelling stories. Um, so maybe we'll start with Maya's story um, and then we'll do Christine's. Uh, so Kristen, sorry. Uh, so Maya, if you want to jump in and just sort of, I don't know, tell, tell, I, I know your story well. So just, just tell your story because I know it's a great way to start the session. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm, so my name is Mai, I'm in Montreal, I'm Vietnamese, and I'm also an ad executives, an ad executive, so I was going on with my life and everything was super fine until I was told that I had leukemia, which is blood cancer. So I went through that whole ordeal while I was pregnant with my second child. So my first child was three years old, my second child was in my belly and he or she was um, 15 months, uh, 15 weeks pregnant. And then I heard about the news. I didn't feel well. I thought it was a cold. It was not a cold. And they told me that I, I had leukemia and I had to terminate the pregnancy in order to survive. So I did all that chemotherapy. And they told me that I was really lucky because the type of leukemia that I had was treatable with chemotherapy. The cancer that I had was treatable with chemotherapy. And at that age, I was 32. And I thought I was done with cancer. And I was going to live my best life. And little that I know, 10 months after being in remission, I relapsed. And the doctor told me that I needed to have a stem cell transplant or a bone marrow transplant. And they had to go through uh, my, my sibling. So I have an older brother and he tested and he was not a match. And unlike blood, it's, it's fairly difficult to find a compatible stem cell or bone marrow donor. You need to have the same ethnicity. And it, I just fell apart when the doctor told me, well, because you're Vietnamese, it's going to be very difficult for you to find a donor. And because most of our donors internationally, um, so it's a quest to find an international donor that is ready to donate their stem cells. Um, at that time, there was 25 million donors and not one donor matched me because of my ethnicity. And, and the majority of um, donors are Caucasians, which means that minority groups are not are not going to have that same fair chance to have against against cancer um, so so we'll come we'll, we'll come back to that point i, I want to just jump in for a second because this is this is sort of a pivotal point in in the story right things are looking 
pretty dark. I mean, we see my <laughs> standing in front of us today talking to us. So we know there's, there's somewhat of a happy ending to this, but I'd like to point out, you know, what, what would you have done if you were in my situation? I know what my did. Um, and I think it reflects great critical thinking, great creative thinking, and, and just, you know, uh, a go-getter kind of attitude um, that's really important. But I'd like, you know, everyone to just kind of imagine themselves in her place for a moment now, a, a mom with, with a kid uh, who is now facing potential death unless she can find a, a donor and there just aren't any that match her ethnicity. Uh, so yeah, continue the story, please. Yeah. So I was in isolation when my doctor broke me the news that I did not have any compatible donor on 25 million. And I told them, listen, I'm in, I'm in the advertising business and I'll do whatever it takes to find myself a donor. And if, if it's not for me, then it's going to be for somebody else. And so my friends in advertising and we reached out to the media, which made a huge campaign in 2014. I had my face on billboards all across Canada. We were, I was doing interviews, being bald um, in my in my room in the isolation at the hospital. The doctors were involved, also friends, and then it made a huge, a huge campaign during summer 2014. And people didn't know me, but they were willing to swab and potentially be a donor for me or for it a perfect stranger really who needed that help. And so I did not have my compatible donor. I was saved by a cord blood. So inside a baby cord blood, there's just enough stem cells to save me because I'm, I'm quite petite. Um, so I was very, very lucky to have that option. Um, but that campaign saved five patients up to now. So so, I mean, I mean that's, so that, that's very cool because it's going to connect to what we're going to ask of you guys. So, so I think that point is really important. Five lives saved, um, right there, which, which is truly amazing. And, and six, cause I mean, I'm sure everything you were doing inspired people to try hard to, to help you as well. Um, so I, I think that's, yeah, very, very nice. Let's. Uh, she mentioned swab, swabbing. We're going we're to come to that a little bit, but maybe you want to just briefly describe what, what that process involves. Um, so the process is you have to be, you have to be young. So you have to be between the age of 17 to 35 for the rest of Canada. In Quebec, it's 18 to 35. You register online. They send you a swab kit, which is essentially just like, it's very similar to Q-tips. You use you swab the inside of your cheeks, you send it back to the registry and they might call you one day to donate or they might not if you're not matched to any patients. Um, there's two methods to donating. One is through, um, is through the peripheral blood stem cell donation. So it's very similar to donating blood. Uh, you have to sit there for four to six, maybe eight hours and then you're perfectly awake. There's a machine that's going to take um, the blood that is filtered through one arm. The machine takes the stem cells, the extra stem cells, and then they give you the blood that they're not using back to the other arm. So you're not losing anything. And prior to that D date, you have five days with um, medication. So injection just to boost the number of stem cells from your bone marrow to your bloodstream. And then that D date, they take the extra out. So you're not losing anything. And in terms of pain or discomfort, it's more like as if you had a cold. So during the five days, you feel a bit achy, but when you donate, it's perfectly fine. And honestly, 80% of the time is through that method. And the other method, the 15% of the time is uh, through a bull marrow. So you're being under general anesthesia just one night, and then the next day you're uh, you can go home. And it's not they they don't give you pain big painkillers. They give you Tylenol, so it's very tolerable. And the donor makes the decision on which type of donation they want to proceed. So a, a doctor cannot impose on you. Oh, you're gonna have to go through a, a bone marrow. Uh, the donor decides if they're comfortable, which methods they're more uh, comfortable. Very cool. 
Cool, cool. Okay, let's let's now switch to Kristen's story. Um, so yeah, maybe give give a little bit of background and then yeah, just tell your story. Yeah, for sure. So my name's Kristen. Um, I actually, I I guess I'll start with why I'm even here in this interview. Uh, so I actually um, uh, volunteer through another organization uh, and. Um, my actually, uh, I guess, presented uh, uh, at one of those events. Uh, and when I heard her story, it was so similar to um, kind of a, a story, not that I have personally, but um, so that's kind of how how uh, we connected. Um, and I reached out and said, you know, like, I want to I want to be involved. I want to help. Um, I registered to be a stem cell donor um, a few years ago, um, but being just very, very Caucasian. <laughs> I've, I've never had uh, anyone, anyone match um, because there's such a, a, a abundance of, of Caucasian donors. Um, so anyways, um, uh, a couple years ago, uh, my friend of 22 years, uh, Jillian Soban, uh, she was unfortunately diagnosed uh, four weeks before her wedding um, with uh, acute myeloid uh, leukemia. Um, so uh, she was diagnosed, she immediately went in uh, for treatment. I think it was the next day, if not the following day. Uh, it was very, very quick. Um, and uh, again, no match. Um, so out of all of the people that, that uh, had registered, uh, she was not matched with anybody. Um, they tested, she has two sisters. Um, one of her sisters, uh, the doctor said was, was close enough <laughs> for, for a match. So she went through the stem cell transplant uh, with her sister's uh, stem cells. Um, lots of complications, uh, but she did uh, eventually kind of come through. Uh, she was released from the hospital. Um, a short time later, uh, it was under a year, I'm gonna say, nine months, 10 months later, um, she had, she noticed like her gums were, were swollen. Um, so she was like, Oh, at my next, at my next checkup, I'll, I'll mention it sort of thing. And went to her next checkup and immediately the nurse was like, this isn't, this isn't good. Ran a bunch of tests. The, the leukemia was back. Um, and, uh, she actually ended up at that point with a perfect, uh, match, um, somewhere in the States, um, and the person pulled out, um, before they were, they were able to, to go through with anything. Um, so this time around they tested her mom again, close enough was, was the doctor's language around that. Uh, so she went through the, the, uh, transplant again with her mom's, uh, donated stem cells. Um, it was fairly successful, um, which was, which was good. Uh, things were looking hopeful. Um, but apparently she contracted a bunch of, of different infections. She had three infections alone in her, in her pick line. Um, and, uh, she went into, into ICU, um, one day they incubated her and that was, she unfortunately didn't wake up after, uh, after that. So she did pass. Um, and, uh, I guess just my point in, in being here and, and telling her story is, is to hope that, you know, we can get more people on that, on that registry. Uh, her background was very, very diverse. Um, her mom born in India, her dad born in, uh, Poland, I believe. Um, and then both parents born in different. So, I mean, she had so many different, um, mixes in there that uh that yeah I mean they again like I said they did find that one match um but but they pulled out um and and didn't want to donate so yeah. so yeah so that's like I said that's kind of my hope in 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 being here is to is to just raise awareness and and get those ethically ethically ethnically diverse um people to donate because you know there's lots of of us Caucasians. But <laughs> yeah. So how old was she when she passed? Uh, 32. 
Because mm. I say I've I've seen pictures that Kristen's posted on on yeah. Facebook, and and she could be one of you guys. I mean, she she looks to me. I mean, she those some of those pictures were when you were both a little younger, yeah. but I mean, very much she is the face of UT Scarborough, and in 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 a you know very real sense. And that's just you know first of all, sorry, Kristen, because I know how close she was to you. Um, so th- let, let's do this weird backstory. How the heck did you guys get here? <laughs> so why are the three of us together. Um, and, and, and maybe I'll let you tell that story a little bit, Kristen, because I think it all came from Kristen just wanting to try to have an impact. And once again, I want to highlight a little bit of the critical thinking and the creative thinking and, and also the, the importance of your associations, your relationships that you form as you go through life, which at the time may seem just people that you meet, um, but at other times the, they provide opportunities. So maybe you want to tell a little bit of that story, uh, Kristen, how we came here. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of, as I, as I mentioned, I guess, in the beginning of my little blurb there, um, I was, I am volunteering with a foundation called the Upside Foundation. Um, and through that, um, I, I had, uh, you know, seen the, the Swab the World kind of um, pitch, I guess you could say. Um, so I immediately reached out um, and, you know, just said, I don't know how I can help, if I can help, what I can do. Uh, but I, I would, I would love to, so kind of let me know. Right. And, and we kind of converse back and forth and I was like, uh, oh, we're actually one of our kind of top things. She asked me where I was located and, uh, I said Toronto and, uh, she said, you know, one of our, our top things is, is trying to kind of get an in into U of T. Do you know anybody? I was like, oh, actually I do. <laughs> Uh, so probably about, I don't know, Steve, how long ago did you meet Leo? It, it, it was a while. So, so Leo Kristen's husband was our very first guitar teacher. I don't yeah. know, 20 years ago or something. So my wife and I took lessons uh, from him and he, he now plays drums in, in our band. Uh, he's a, he's a way better guitar player than I am. So that's why we put him on drums. So that no one can see the comparison. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, just so Kristen and Leo and I have crossed paths a few times, we walk our dogs together every now and then. And, and, you know, but this is the sort of random thing, I think, where, you know, Kristen reaching out to my and just saying, again, I don't know what I can do, but if I can, if I can do something, you know, that if there's something that's important to you, if you want to make a difference to just do some of that random kind of connection, because you just don't know where, where it will lead. And, and so that's kind of led us here. <laughs> and I, I mentioned that I always like these work integrated learning and what that really means by the way, work integrated learning is to have you doing something that's not just a you know, an essay for a class or something where someone will read it and, and throw it away, but rather working on something that has real world relevance that that's important to people. And, and you've kind of heard a theme here a few times that the databases we have to support the stem cell uh, transfusions are so Caucasian. They, they are not as ethnically diverse as they need to be. Uh, and so, you know, that is the challenge. How can we reach a young? Mai said we're looking for young people, you know, in 17, 18 to mid 30s. Uh, and we're looking for ethnically diverse. Uh, well, you guys are it. <laughs> you guys are it. Uh, but not just you guys, you guys and your larger communities of, of people that you, you know. And so, you know, when I heard my kind of talking about her, her marketing approach, okay, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do something. Um, this felt to me like the sort of project that you guys might do. So what, what we're considering just to lay this out on the, on the table, uh, be explicit about it, is that you would work in groups of three or four, I'll ask you not to work with friends. That's the temptation to try to kind of connect with your friends. You already have those connections, you know, be, be the Leo, <laughs> so to speak, in the sense that, you know, we met with this dude that we didn't know who he was at all. And then that's turned into something that's really important and, and gives opportunities. Those three other people, I think it's best if you don't know them at all and you work with them on a project together and you may even want to find people of your ethnic group, as we'll talk about. I'm going to have to figure out how to facilitate that. But what would you do? Well, there's there's two sorts of projects we have in mind, and I'm going to ask Mai to speak to one of these. But but one of them is you could learn more about Swab the World, and we'll share some information about them, their website, various other things. And one thing you could do is just come up with what we call public service announcements. You know, something if you were trying to make others like you aware of Swab the World, and if you were trying to convince them to maybe consider uh, adding their 
uh, DNA, adding their information to that database. How could you use what you learned in, in the psychology class to create a public service announcement that might do that? And, and that can be anything. It can be a TV ad, a radio ad, uh, something you'd share on social media. And in fact, that's sort of part, you know, you guys know how to reach you better than we do. Uh, and so you guys saying, hey, this is what I think is an effective approach to doing that. Uh, and so, yeah, you could work as a group of four and try to come up with this public service announcement, almost like you're, well, like sort of an advertising agency working for Swab the World uh, as a sort of consulting thing. Um, the other option, and I'll get my to speak to this a little bit, is I know from our last conversation that just like when, when my needed help and she said her face was posted on billboards, et cetera. There are other people right now that need help. Um, and, and they're from a variety of ethnic groups. Uh, and, it may, and some of them may be from your ethnic group. And so another option is that maybe as your group, you decide to, I'll, I'll use the word adopt, adopt one of these people and, and kind of do for them what Mai did for herself, you know, get word out. So rather than it being sort of about swab the world in general, it could be about this individual and, and trying to kind of get word out about the situation they're in, the kind of help they need. Um, and, you know, maybe if that's an individual from your ethnic group, that could feel even a little, little better to, to, and you would have a way to reach out to your ethnic group. So can you speak to that a little bit, Maya? How do they find these people? And yeah. They can find these people through our website. There's, um, there's a section of survivors and patients. And when you go on patient, these are real patients that are that we're actually helping. We're creating uh, billboard campaigns for them. We are on social media uh, for them, but it would be great for the students also to promote and to, to reach out to your own um, communities and see, well, I didn't know that we have this Southeast Asian um, twins who cannot find a donor. And maybe if you are, you are in that um, community, in that ethnic group, then um, talking about it, doing social media or, or spreading the news and even swabbing. So that's the first per portion is we can do, you guys can do a, a broad and ad campaign for swab or specifically choose or adopt a patient. And I would even say, uh, because CBS, so we work with Canadian Blood Services, it is a possibility to swab people on premise. So we could organize an event, let's say for the Southeast Asian for, um, for a specific patient and we can get there and then we can swab uh, people from that ethnicity. And that has a direct impact on saving lives. So that would be, that would be great. Cool. We, we will we'll work on some of those opportunities. And, and let me just highlight that saving lives. I mean, Mai said her work saved five lives. You know, I said, I want you to do something that's not just going to end up in a waste paper basket, but is going to actually potentially have an impact. I, I think we've done some great projects in the past, but I don't think any have had the potential positive impact that this could have. I mean, we could literally, you could literally, every one of you students could literally save somebody's life or multiple uh, people's lives even. Um, so, so pretty cool. Um, the, I'll give you a sense of how this will work, by the way, because it's a bit strange. We have 300 people in the class. And so what we'll end up, it's about 330 now, I think. So we'll end up with about 80 groups of four. Uh, and so all of you 80 will produce a, some sort of campaign along the lines of what we discussed. By the way, it's going to be very, you're, you're basically going to get participation points for doing things. We're not going to look at your work and judge its quality. Uh, I'll talk about how you guys will do that, but, but you're not going to get a grade based on the quality. I'm hoping that the work is going to come from your heart, uh, come from your passion and just, uh, you know, let you do what you think is, is great. We will, with those 80, we will have you guys do a round of peer assessment where you assess some of the other projects. And that's just going to allow us to pick the top. 10. And then we're going to reconnect with Maya and Kristen for the top 10, who are going to look at those projects. And um, we're going to pick a top one, two, and three. Uh, and anybody who makes the top one and two or three, uh, so those 12 people will get a reference 
reference letter for me that they can use to apply for jobs or, or other things. Um, but, you know, also you'll just have that, that great feeling. And then there's the potential. I mean, this will be totally up to my, but with, if, if what you produce uh, is a value to swab the world, then there's the potential that they will take and run with what you produce and, and use that as well. And of course, all of you can feel free to share what you're using and, and, and uh, share what you're creating and, and having that impact, you know, directly, even not necessarily through, through my directly. Um, so that's, that's the kind of project we have. And I know it sounds kind of heady. Uh, I do want to add a caveat that, that my course administrator put in my ear, which is that uh, for some people, medical interventions are considered not appropriate or, or whatnot. Uh, if, if somebody really is uh, philo philosophically opposed to this project in some way, we will have an alternate um, thing where you can work as individuals doing something else, um, which I'll define a little bit more. But this is the project that, you know, where my heart is and, and where I hope a lot of you guys see the value and, and embrace it. Um, wow. So let me ask you, my, how did you get to where you got, like how much of your trail depended on your ability to work with other people. I just kind of want to come back to that. You know, is this something that you've been able to do all on your own or, or does it take a no, village? At all. You, you really need to have a village through the stem cell transplant to uh, building a campaign for myself to launching a nonprofit. You, you cannot do it alone. Yeah. It's just impossible you need to have you need to be able to communicate well what you need what what's what you what's what's your strength what your weaknesses but you need to surround yourself with people and people that really actually care about the about the problem and really want to work and and do uh, and do whatever it takes I, I think that's that's a great thing to keep in mind when you're doing the group work. So it's always uncomfortable when you're meeting a bunch of new people and yet, and you have to interact with them and you're not sure what, what it's going to be like, but exactly what, you know, the hope of this project is that you, you unite around a common passion that you guys see the potential value in what this work could, could do. And that makes the discomfort, the initial discomfort worth it. Uh, and it often just blossoms into something really beautiful by the end where you're like, okay, these people are now my friends. And uh, we did one last year for the homeless uh, population. And, and there's now a group of them that are now sort of taking that banner and ran, run with it. I hope the same is going to happen with Swab the World as well. We, we will see uh, how that all unfolds. But I think this is a really important project. Uh, I really want to thank Mai and Kristen, especially Kristen, for sort of connecting me with this because I would have never found Mai without Kristen. Uh, and so I'm really looking forward to see what we're going to do. We're going to do this, by the way, in the summer. We're also going to do it in the big fall class um, as well. So this is a little bit of a test run to see how things go. If you do have any thoughts or issues, um, please uh, let me know. We may somewhere along the line have an office hours where we invite Mai and Kristen back. If like once you guys have started working on things, if you have questions or thoughts and want to have a little bit of a discussion, we can maybe do that as well. But um, I, th I think I'll just sort of turn it back to you guys. Is there anything else you would like to mention to the students before they get going on this project? Or do you think we've covered it? If you'd like to jump in with anything, feel free. No, I'm just, I'm just so happy that we've met and I'm just so <laughs> happy to have, uh, to, to have the students working on this project. I think on behalf of the patients that, that we have talked, um, the work is going to be very significant to them. It's unbelievable. Is there a chance, Mai, that one of them might drop in on an office hour? Would that be a, it might be something we could just think about, but, but, you know, sometimes actually speaking to someone who's going through it yeah. is very powerful. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, and anything else you wanted to add, Kristen? Or uh, I, I just, again, I, I'm, I'm, I think it, it shows the power of just sometimes what seem like random connections, right? And 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 just um, taking that kind of, like you said, that awkward, like, Whoa, you know, that first step to kind of say hello and reach out. And, and then it, it, it's amazing what what uh, what can come of it. And, and I don't think you realize how important this this is and and you know what a difference it it can make uh, i was speaking to uh, jillian my my friend that passed i was speaking to her mom yesterday just making sure i kind of had every i'm nervous i 
I make a living like behind the scenes. So this is, this is different for me, but, um, and she was just over the moon about all of this. Right. So I think it's, I think it's great. Fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, largely this is in Jillian's memory in part, this, this whole project, but, but also in my, the fact that it's not in my memory <laughs> is, is, is I think the two, the two sides of the story we want to keep in mind that there could be tragic uh, ends, but there can also be, you know, fantastic, great stories that come out of it. And, and what we're going to try to do is, is make more of the latter happen, um, which I think is really cool. That's yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, th well, thank you both. Um, uh, I will share this with the students. There may be questions that come from them I may start a little Q&A kind of thing that I share with you at some point but let's uh, let's start from here and say, see where it goes I'm really thrilled to be working with you both I think this is going to be really an interesting and and I hope I hope a life-changing project for some people <laughs>